Good afternoon. The electoral board for the Village of Forest Park is called to order. I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Moritz to call the roll call, please. Commissioner Mannix? Here. Clerk Moritz? Here. Mayor Pilgrim? Here. Uh, I'm going to have the uh, board attorney uh, provide an opening statement. Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Bastion. I am. I am the point attorney for the Forest Park Municipal Officers Electoral Board. Uh, the Electoral Board shall be composed of Mayor Anthony Caldero, who will act as chairman, Commissioner Thomas Mannix, the senior most commissioner of the village, and uh, village clerk Vanessa Morris. The Electoral Board shall take up the question as to whether or not the petitions to place a public question regarding video gaming on the um, question for determination at an election in the village of Forest Park, whether the uh, petitions are in proper form, whether or not they were filed within the time and under the conditions required by law, and whether or not the petitions are what they purport to be. And the board shall in general decide whether or not the petitions are valid and whether or not the objections thereto shall be sustained in the decision of majority of the electoral board shall be final subject to uh, judicial review as provided by section 10-10.1 of the election code. The electoral board will state its findings, decision, and order in writing and shall state which objections, if any, are sustained and or overruled. A copy of the board's decision will be served upon the parties in an open proceeding. If a party does not appear for receipt of the decision, the decision shall be deemed to have been served on that absent party on the date when a copy of the decision is either personally delivered to that party or on a date uh, when a copy of the electoral board's decision is deposited in the U.S. mail in a sealed envelope package and postage prepaid addressed to the party. Today, the, elect the board will adopt the rules of procedure for the introduction of evidence, uh, the presentation of uh, arguments, if any, and for the filing of briefs if the parties wish to do so. And uh, looking at the objections, the board will also schedule a records examination. Uh, the board, uh, having had an opportunity to uh, review the proposed rules of procedure, uh, I would ask that a motion be made to adopt the rules as presented and to admit those rules as board exhibit number one. So moved. Okay, there is a motion to adopt the uh, rules of procedure. Is there a second? Second. And then Ms. Moritz, you can call the roll. Commissioner Mannix? Aye. Clerk Moritz? Aye. Mayor Calderon? Aye. The rules are adopted. The uh, chair will uh, accept the rules of procedure as board exhibit number one is so ordered. Secondly, I would ask that uh, it should be made to admit the call the hearing as board exhibit number two. Is there a motion? So moved. We have a motion and is there a second? Second. We have a motion and, and a second. Um, Ms. Moritz, you can call the roll. Commissioner Mannix? Aye. Clerk Moritz? Aye. Mayor Calderon? Aye. The uh, chair so orders uh, board exhibit number two. Uh, finally, exhibit number three, if it's a pleasure to admit the uh, petitions for referendum on video gaming as board exhibit number three. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Uh, Madam, Ms. Moritz, you can call the roll. Commissioner Mannix. Aye. Clerk Moritz, aye. Mayor Calderon. Aye. And finally, as board exhibit number four, the objection to the proponent's petitions, the objection of uh, James S. Watts. In this matter, will be known as the objections of James S. Watts to the petition a referendum on video gaming in the village of Forest Park, Illinois, and marked as the 2017 
Morris Park Municipal Officers Electoral Board case uh, and what we do with So we're going to entertain a motion to accept the objection. The objection is uh, board exhibit number four. Is there a, a motion? So we'll be right. There is, uh, it's been moved. Is there a second? Second. And a second. So Ms. Moritz, you can call the roll. Commissioner Maddox? Aye. Clerk Moritz? Aye. Mayor Calderon? Aye. So it's so ordered. Uh, the board is accepting the exhibit number four as the objections to James Watts. Petition for referendum on video The parties are present. The parties will identify themselves, please. <coughs> Good afternoon, Ed Mullen, on behalf of the proponents, uh, led for us park both on video gaming. Uh, and Mr. Mullen, you have a, uh, an appearance, if you can file that with the board and a copy of the Would you like that? Please. Okay. <coughs> Good afternoon, members of the board. James Nelly, we have the objector. I'll file my written appearance with the board. Yes, uh, we do intend to file a motion to strike several paragraphs of the objection. Service and filing, correct? Yes. So, motion to strike by January 3rd at 5 p.m., Mr. Nally. I could have till uh, Friday to respond. Response. <coughs> that would be the 5th. Mr. Mull, if you anticipate it. Uh, I, I do, and if we could have until the 9th uh, to do that, which is the Tuesday or Sunday. Sunday is fine. By 5. Yes. By 1.7. Uh, and we're going to need, obviously, a records exam. don't know, I'll have to contact the county to determine what their availability is, uh, how many stations they're going to have. So I don't know that we need to reconvene prior to the records exam unless, gentlemen, you want to come back just to argue the motion, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me busy we're going to have to do the records exam one way or we're going to have to do it but I, I think it would make most sense if you set a hearing after the records yes, exam sir. is completed and we come back and do both at the same time I would agree okay um, any other matters Mr. Mullen Mr. Nelly no sir no Okay, so before we adjourn, and we do have provisions in our agenda for public comment, if there is anyone that wanted to make public comment, I think there were some folks that uh, signed in sheets, and we are going to need to make one of our microphones available. Yeah, why don't we just uh, pull one of those. Yeah, the folks come up to the podium there.
Ms. Moritz, when you're uh, prepared, then you can call the first uh, public comment. Ada Worthington. examples of voter suppression where populations are not allowed to have their voice heard and people some parties trying to keep that happening and I just want to mention that because I don't think that Commissioner Mannix or uh, Clerk Moritz or Mayor Calderon wants to be considered as parties that are keeping people from voting <coughs> we as Forks Park residents want to have voted. We voted before, but we want to vote in a binding referendum. We want to be on the ballot. Please do not put your votes in the camp of those who don't want people to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle Fitzhenry. Michelle Fitzhenry. The issue of video gambling in Forest Park was brought up a long time ago, and it was the administration that asked for the public's opinion in the form of a water survey. The respondents of that survey overwhelmingly said that they weren't interested in it. The mayor and commissioners or the administration again asked for the public opinion in the form of a non-binding referendum. The result was the same. Overwhelmingly, the voters said that they were not interested in this. A group of, a group of residents began a petition. The number of petitioners engaged in that and the number of signatures, both on the last petition and this petition, speaks for itself. There were approximately 3,000 signatures last time approximately 3,500 this time, and many, many resident petitioners going out and getting signatures. Whether we lost last time or we won last time, it doesn't dismiss the fact that people want a voice in it. We aren't asking to ban video gambling. We're asking for a voice, and we're asking for a choice. We're your constituents, and it sounds like that's fair. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica Wood. Um, my husband and I are new to Forest Park. We moved here in the fall of 2015. Um, we looked at Forest Park, Oak Park, Brookfield, Berwyn, trying to find our first home. And um, Forest Park won out because of its affordability, proximity to the city, and its charm. Um, and I just want to comment today that if you had asked my husband or me on the day we took possession of our home, um, what do you think your first two years in Forest Park would be? I would have seen the St. Patrick's Day Parade, or casket races, or ice cream at Brown Cow. Um, I never would have thought my first two years in Forest Park would have been fighting for my right to vote. Um, here I am today in front of the panel of elected council members, and um, I hope you listen and make the right decision. Um, give the people of Forest Park their voice and their vote back. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Vince Kelby. <clears throat> Jeff, you know my last name, and my wife and I live at uh, 1119 Circle, 
and we've lived there for 25 years. We love Forest Park. Um, I just wanted to start with something Abraham Lincoln said. Uh, elections belong to the people. It's their decision. If they decide to turn their back on the fire and burn their behinds, then they will just have to sit on their blisters. <laughs> We're not going to sit on our blisters. And I'll tell you, a turning point for me was when I was standing outside one of the elementary schools with our with the petition put forward in hand, getting signatures from my fellow citizens, it felt like a Norman Rockwell painting. It really did. And then we started to notice this crew of young guys who were also circulating petitions. Now these were the three question petitions that were there for no other reason than to knock ours off the ballot. And these young fellows wouldn't tell us their names, wouldn't tell us how much they were getting paid, wouldn't tell us who had hired them. We still don't know who hired them. But that's not the way democracy should work. And I'm just asking you to do the right thing and give everyone in Forest Park a voice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Betty Alzamora. Public comment. All right, great. Um, council, any other matters that we 
So uh, certainly, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the attorneys representing both interests, you know, have their uh, tasks and you know what you have to do and you've got the time frame for that. You know, <clears throat> needless to say, we have quite a number of uh, folks that are here in the audience and certainly um, they may not be familiar with the, uh, the election laws as either Mr. Mullen or Mr. Nally are. Uh, in some cases, and in fact, we just heard in some <coughs> public comment, uh, some folks might think that we convened today to like make a decision today to either allow or not allow uh, the matter that's before us to go on the ballot. And that simply is not the case. Uh, and I, the attorneys know that, uh, representing both the proponent and opponent. And so what's going to happen is we're going to, going to what's called recess because once the electoral board has convened, until we've concluded our matter, we cannot adjourn. And uh, clearly, we're not going to be adjourning until well, sometime absolutely after January 7th. I mean, in fact, what day is that that the reply is due? That's a Sunday, so um, we're going to have the reply back, but we won't be reconvening as an electoral board on that Sunday. So I just mentioned that for the benefit of those, um, you know, that came to uh, observe the process, because this indeed is a process, and this doesn't have anything to do with uh, voter suppression. This has to do entirely with laws not created by the three of us, not created by the local government. These are laws that are in the Illinois statutes. And so, you know, our job as electoral board is to follow those laws, and we intend to do just that. But it is going to be a couple of weeks, uh, is my best guess, before uh, this matter is concluded. So. Um, with that, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to entertain a motion to recess, and uh, and then I'll and just for for clarity before I make that motion, <clears throat> so we have the replies to you by the seventh, and then Mr. Bastian's going to talk to the county about a records exam, and then that date will then yeah. dictate. I don't know what the county schedule is, in as much as there are volumes of objections pending at the county now for county commissioners. Uh, in various other offices. So I, I will say that I have a case that was called on December 22nd that still has not been scheduled. For a records exam? For a records exam. Well, I, I, have one, I have three that are done, and I have one that is scheduled. Well, that's hard for me. Well, it's not out of the ordinary. So, Mr. Mullen, as you well know, I mean, that part of it is out of our hands. Uh, we have no control over the County of Cook. We cannot tell the County of Cook what day they have to perform that record, records exam, and, and, and you know that. So um, uh, members, you know, we're at the mercy of the County of Cook, and that's why I said the absolute earliest would be sometime around the 7th, but, you know, that could potentially be a little bit of a long shot. It's going to be several weeks. Uh, before I foresee this re reconvening from uh, recess. And uh, certainly, this will all be publicly noticed, meaning that it will be posted uh, uh, here at the Village Hall uh, to comply with Open Meetings Act. So uh, in the meantime, I'll entertain a motion to recess. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Marich, you can call the roll call. Commissioner Mannix. Clerk Moritz, aye. Mayor Calderon. Aye. We stand in recess.